right, while everyone is jumping into the meeting notes, if you would, actually, I'm going to drop the meeting notes link in the Slack chat in case anyone is digging around for that. There we go. And if everyone can make sure and everything is on the agenda before we get started. All right, I am going to wake up here for a second because I'm just going in circles. If we have anyone new on the call today who would like to speak up and introduce themselves, um, maybe what they're working with, <coughs> on, to hear from you all, we can welcome you to the project. And we're just coming up on five after. So let's go ahead and get rolling. First off, we have, um, we're going to retry the Kubert Community Wiki. Uh, we tried announcing this last week, but we needed to adjust the link visibility. So um, Andrew, you want to speak to that? Uh, hopefully it's self-explanatory. Um, so this will be uh, relatively frequently updated to showcase um, uh, open course proposals or, or very soon be open course proposals. Um, the people that, that are, you know, they within our Qubit you know, world. And also conferences that are coming that have one or more Qubit sessions. Um, so yeah, if you you're talking about this. Um, Feel free to, if you if you see something you, you think that you would like to present at or you think that Qvert should attend, um, let me know and I can add to the the wiki so that other people can see it. I think that's it. I'm currently preparing presentation about Qvert and our way of implementing it. I'm going to speak at uh, highload.am. Not sure if it should be published there. Um, cool. Uh, do you mind just putting it in the chat so I can take it? Yeah, just, I'll send you CFP. That's right. That's right, thank you. Do you say you've, you've um, so it's been submitted or it's been approved or you will submit? It is uh, approved already. Oh, nice one. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for getting that going. And let's see. Why are CRDs managed by the VERT operator? Do you want to go ahead and speak? Yeah, I can speak about that. Uh, we are still trying to implement KubeVirt into the cows, our platform. And we faced with the um, different logic. We usually installing call CRDs before uh, then uh, installing operators and everything which is man managing them. And I just found that uh, Virt operator is managing uh, CRDs by itself, uh, which is not actually a right decision, I think. Uh, not right, no, <laughs> how to say that correctly. I think that uh, CRDs should be always installed before the operator. And yeah, there is some code from the operators hub that operators should not manage uh, self uh, CRDs. I just wanted to ask um, what was the reason uh, to managing them from the virtual operator side? If, I would be glad if somebody can answer me that question. Hello. Um, so the background or, or you know fr from the battle days before vert operator was managing uh the crds they were required to be installed by a cluster admin manually and it dramatically increased the complexity 
of being able to deploy uh, Kubevert. Um, and if I understand that that is actually the operator pattern is to be able to manage the CRDs for that. Because if you think about Vert controllers, actually the heart and soul of Kubevert, Vert operator is the, the thing that bootstraps and makes it possible to for Kubevert to exist. So um, as far as I know, we are doing it right. Yes, I just wondering about another case. What if user uh, trying to use to implement GitOps pattern and, uh, for example, he's having his virtual machine described in uh, in Git, and if we making some changes in CRDs, uh, do we do any changes in CRDs like critical changes, not changing uh, and not changing the version of it? I just trying to understand what the reason uh, I saw there is like complex logic, like first we trying to install all the components waiting until all of them will be deployed and updated. And then we updating the CRDs. Uh, is it critical if the CRDs will be installed before, before um, updating the components? Yeah, I can talk about that. Um, so there's, there's two levels of CRDs here really um, there are some crds that come with the yaml that we used to install the vert operator so that, that's like our bottom or top layer yeah, yeah, which way you're looking outside. at this uh, and, and that's the qvert crd so that's the one that uh, installs and manages the qvert install so that one lives outside of vert operator then there are the resource or workload crds which ones we're familiar with that start virtual machines and virtual machine instances and, and other things like that, which are managed by the vert operator itself. And the reason those are managed by vert operator today is uh, there are some complex code paths that involve with updating CRDs. So uh, when we do version our CRDs, um, that's a complex path where we have to coordinate uh, rolling out our various controllers. We have to have controllers that are aware of this new uh, version that we're about to deploy. And then mm -hmm. we have to uh, roll out the CRD, which actually enables that version within, like it registers that version with the cluster. And if we don't do that, then the potential is that if you roll out your CRDs before the operators that can actually process those, uh, you might, depending on what, what's actually happened with the versioning, you might end up with an inoperable system uh, like intermittently. So it's it's to um, have seamless zero uh, downtime updates. And it's also to ensure that we have the opportunity to hook into um, the logic that updates resources when we do mm -hmm. like a version change. Like there's a, a process, I, I don't know if you looked at it before, where there's the storage version, and then there's the, the various like um, conversions there. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to control that as well. Um, so that's kind of, of the motivation there, if that makes sense. We could look at that in more detail and see if it's actually necessary now. No, no, no. I think I think I understand, uh, yeah, the reasons of that. Uh, the only question I wanted to ask is, uh, or okay, never mind. <laughs> so I think it should work that way, and there is no other options to install CRDs before. It's not pretended by the Qubit logic by Virt operator. So we hit something it's recently that was interesting, uh -huh. uh, where there was a component that needed. Uh, <laughs> This is odd, but it it needed uh, access to Qvert CRDs even when Qvert wasn't installed. Have you hit anything like that? Like, is there a reasoning behind why you might like the CRDs um, to exist? It's our internal platform logic. I think it's not uh, any problem of Qvert. Uh, I just trying to fit some functions we having in our platform and the way the Qvert is working on. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things which are not working at our platform. So I will probably need to change the logic of our platform first to make it working with Qbeard. Yeah. And the question I remember which question I wanted to ask. So 
virtual operator also do perform um, version updates. So if there will be new version of CRDs, it will automatically migrate the objects to new version. Am I right? That's the goal. That's that's the kind of code pass that it can handle. Um, we don't. I don't think we've had to do that quite yet with the storage version and to a. Uh, ver new version of a CRD that was incompatible with the old one do any sort of conversion or anything. But... Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So thanks a lot for such clear description, clear answer, and thank you. Yeah. The second question was about CDI, but uh, yeah, I probably didn't found any uh, example how to do that. I started started digging into source code. Yeah, the question is, um, does CDI support importing images from private Docker reg registry? And I haven't found any option to put uh, Docker secret there. Somebody already answered that, that that should work. I found that there is access key and secret key, the same logic like with S3, should I just put username and password there? Yes. So I guess it should work. Yeah. yeah, I I haven't it, checked. Another that. option is um, there for the registry imports. There's a pull method, and if you mm -hmm. specify node, it will. And your nodes are already configured to use the private registry. Um, the image will get pulled by the node rather than the container uh, itself. So it won't. It would be using the credentials indirectly. You know, just using the system as. Um, that's interesting. And how does it how it will work? Uh, is it depending on CRI? Yeah. So it, when the importer pod will get created with two containers, one container will actually uh, have the registry image in it, and then we um, copy it from that container over to the PVC. Uh huh. And so so it okay. uses the the mechanics of the you know yeah the CRI to actually pull the image. So that's the most and, way to do it. And on the right, understand that this is CRI agnostic logic. It will work with any CRI. Yeah. Um, if cool. you do need Thank to you. specify it on the data volume template for our, wherever you're specifying the image itself, I dropped a link to the doc to cover how to reference a secret for those credentials as well. Okay, okay, thanks a lot. No more questions. Cool, no worries. Thank you very much for, for bringing that all up. Let's see, uh, Kubert 1.0 release date news. That was me, <laughs> Andre from DDesk. Um, thanks, uh, David Havaso, it's here. Any news about release? Yeah, we're moving to a new release cadence that's going to align with Kubernetes. Uh, it, it won't be an official, we won't have a one before our, uh, as, a, as a major release yet. But uh, so the release cadence is changing. We'll, we'll start releasing on the same cadence as Kubernetes, meaning um, when Kubernetes makes a release, uh, we'll have a corresponding release like a week later. So that'll be every, I guess, three or four months. I can't remember exactly the time frame there. As far as the 1.0 release time frame, um, the, the code is done. Uh, it's more of the types of things that we're, we're shaping up for 1.0 have to do more with um, the release cadence. So giving people predict, uh, predictable uh, long-term uh, releases and uh, the release maintenance. So uh, coming up with the policy around um, how backports are handled to previous releases and how long those backports um, are possible to, like how long will support backporting features to what release. So I wouldn't be concerned uh, if, if you're looking for features. Um, no, I'm looking if, only for yeah. an official release on it, the it, web. Yeah. Word. <laughs> it means nothing. It means nothing except for uh, like the communities um, kind of support contract that's uh that's all 1.0 means now so i wouldn't 
Um, I wouldn't be hesitant to consider what we have now is 1.0. It, it's just kind of a, a meaningless um, <laughs> a meaningless number at this point. Mention you. This means version 58, correct? Uh, we released 58 in October. 59 will be the first uh, release that starts using this new cadence. And then once we kind of feel comfortable with the new cadence, so we'll get one release under our belts there. I think uh, maybe it's December when 59 will actually release because that corresponds with the next Kubernetes release. We'll start talking about incrementing to that, that magical one major release sometime early next year, but it's we just the code meaning. is already there. That's the most important part. <laughs> there, there's nothing you're like. There's nothing that's fundamentally going to change once we hit that one. Now, uh, if okay. there's something you're waiting on, um, it's not going to magically appear just because we have a one. In the issue that yeah. my investors ask because they was thinking that is not a let's say stable code. No one one one, one dot zero version. You understand? Sure. Well. Uh, Red Hat are, has this in production. Know, uh, we Google, are large. <laughs> Red Hat and Google both have uh, this product as general availability within their organizations. So yeah. I, I don't know what more we can like. If you're looking for confidence that Qvert's production ready, I'm not sure what more I can um, say. I like to point oh, out it's the working timeline. for us. Let's say. <laughs> Okay. I like to point out the timeline for Terraform 1.0 release because Terraform was a mainstay in productions everywhere long before it hit a 1.0 release. Um, and that's just one of many examples. So, all right. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, Minikube issues, huh? Yeah, so I'm. I'm Trying to raise this, uh, I was hunting for the actual uh, issue. It's 859 in uh, the web repo. Let me drop that into the document. Oops. Ah. <laughs> okay. So essentially what's happening here is we are seeing that the latest versions of Minikube and apparently Kind cannot uh, run a VM. And so part of this is vert handler is coming up and not creating the objects that it should be creating. It's failing to find libvert. Um, I'm not quite qualified to go that deep into the, the debug process, but I did put together a spreadsheet trying to track mini cube versions with their cube vert, vert or sorry, with their uh, Kubernetes versions against kubevert versions and found going back kind of far that uh, at least two or three versions of each were, were not getting uh, success with uh, the basic demo. Now that is in KVM2 uh, driver for, for Minikube. If you're in Podman, it seems to work. But there, there seems to be something weird with uh, Minikube's actual VM image that is breaking kubevert. And I wanted to raise that up. Interesting. So is this related to the Kubernetes 1.25 stuff? No, this is just uh, like a I've tried 124. Uh, I can pull up my spreadsheet and see. So I have tried with um, both 124 and 125 on Minikube version 127.1, 126.1, 124. 5.2 and against uh, Kubert versions that are kind of relative to the, the release of, uh, so like 58, 57, down to 55, and still was running into problems. Uh, then I switched to Podman and with the latest Minikube and the latest, uh, the 1.25 Kubernetes and dot .58 of Kubert, it works.
Now this is this is kind of hot because we're going into KubeCon and telling everybody, yeah. hey, check out our demos, which are <laughs> unfortunately broken. Um, sounds like a worst case scenario, a very valid contrib fast activity. Yeah. Okay. I'll also try putting in a uh, like a quick caveat on the the Minikube page to to say use Podman for now, or you know whichever driver is not KVM. All right, um, it looks like a lot of people clicked on the link. Any other input, thoughts, questions, out loud brainstorming before we move on? Cool, we'll be sure and jump on that if you find yourselves able to help solve the problem or add other context. All right. Let's jump into PRs. Front plug disk feature not working. That's merged. Huh. Um, was this actually something that we discussed last week and moved to this week to look at again? Kat, I think it's just the Piara. It should be solved with the other one, the Piara that was merged. Cool. Maybe they don't reference the issue, yep. so it was not automatically closed, but... Um, do we have developer notes showing how to test um, unreleased features yet? I don't remember what the state of docs are for that. And well, I think you can need to compile it from source code. Yeah, we're not releasing till December. Let's see. Um, let's see, that was 8029. All right. Um, if anyone wants to approve that, an approver would like to. It looks like that would be easy to knock out quickly. That was 
is the Kubert pole 8593. Return directly when key function executes failed. Let's see. I don't know if the reviewers on the issue will be able to check the tests. Um, is there anyone that wants to be assigned to that that's not already? going to drop that on for next week. Make sure it doesn't hang. And speaking of next week, I think a bunch of us will be at KubeCon, so should we consider canceling next week's meeting and setting it for the following? Where will be <clears throat> KubeCon this time? I or Andrew could send a note out to the mailing list canceling if that's what we want to do, or we should probably send a note out specifying to expect attendance to be low, and then we would need a volunteer to host it. Or I can talk to myself about it. That's cool, too. It's good talking, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> no, um, I'm I'm happy to host um, if you'd like me to. Um, that shouldn't be an issue. I won't be going to KubeCon, unfortunately. My my paper was denied. So. Oh, sad. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully next year. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Uh, we're gonna say that's going to be twenty six. All right. Thanks, Larry. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, we should have covered all of the PRs that are noted. Um, nothing dropped in mailing list, so let's hit the bug scrub first. So it looks like opening the conversation to switch the schedulable label to ready. Is there any conversation um, that's already been happening around this or that we can make public or Uh, 
cut just uh, uh, so basically Itamar was suggesting to set scheduler be more equals to false if uh, the host didn't support it KVM. Um, but that was not uh, accepted. So basically, Scalibro should move to be called ready. And that means when the only the um, Kuber component are in ready state. That basically was the um, conclusion of this closed PR. And that's the reason why Tamara opened the new issue. So I'm assuming there's no action for that then right now. Yeah, I also added um, PR that needed to attention. I made a PR like a few weeks ago uh, about adding the cows to adopters list. We are going to release first version, alpha version of virtualization soon. And I'm not sure what should be done to make this PR be merged. Way. There are some tests failed, but I think they fully unrelated. I can make rebase if it needs to be done, but there are already some approves. Yeah, we, um, I even regularly encourage people to consider adding to the adopters list. So this is something we should not leave hanging. Is there anyone we are missing that could help move this through? Sorry? Oh, um, I'm just speaking to everyone else on the call. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If there's anyone else that can uh, help push this through. I, I think it looks like the PR has what it needs. So I think it has the LGTM and approved. So I think it's just testing now. It should be fine. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. All right, let's see. I think this is where we left off. So it looks like the core issue is there not being ARM64 version of vert CTL, which I can commiserate with. Um, is there anyone I should be CCing on this or? Is that something we have on the I use anymore? this library, but I think I have no such problem. Uh, is it like go install? Not sure about it. Now I'm curious. I use it on my uh, Aria M1 laptop, and there were no any problems with importing this library. Let me give it a try. That's weird. crossed and I was able to get the same with 
Yeah, I got it. That is because of go mode. <laughs> There's some replaces. And it's probably will not go going to work until we have some. Um, alternatively, would ARM64 builds of Bert CTL at least solve the the need here, I'm assuming. Okay. Guess without other participation, we will go ahead and move on. This is probably about allocate uh, about available resources for the node. Not sure about that. Yeah. So are they trying to suggest handler. that if it's being utilized, it should register on the node as not allocatable or not not part of capacity? No, this is a old bug we have uh, since uh, they open actually two issues of this kind and one they close it. Uh, let me just, uh, I see the other one was the, um, yeah, that one should be. I was testing it with GPU and had no mm -hmm. such issue, so probably okay. it is just this. Uh, in Vimeo over fabrics, or I'm not sure. So there is like an issue that if you, I oh know I forgot the, that the resources were not correctly updated, and I think we never fixed this. Yeah, like. If you have a device and then uh, you remove it, uh, the number of resources is not like uh, decreased and the other way around. I'm not stumbling on the related issues with my quick search. LHA, do you happen to know how to find the others that you're thinking of? Uh, I paste it in the chat. Did you see the? Oh, okay. Yeah, so they 
I think it's the same, the other two. Yeah, I think that was the same issue. They just opened it and closed it and reopened yeah. it. Yeah, and then I asked if it was oh, similar okay. to one I found in the past. And then he closed it, so... But I haven't checked the comments, so maybe that's... That's fine. Thank you. All right, and with that, unless there are any other last minute additions, I don't see any. <clears throat> then thank you to everyone for your attendance and participation. And um, next week, if you are on the regular call, um, sounds like Larry will be posting and don't be surprised if it is um, not as fully attended um, a bunch of us will be doing stuff at kubecon and representing kubert and uh, hopefully hoping for a really good turnout um, on the contrib fest so if you know anyone who might be in detroit or at kubecon who would like to participate definitely recommend that session where it will be located you know what it is on the um which city con agenda and i need to nail that down uh, detroit yes detroit. where uh -huh. detroit michigan yeah quite not... far from me All right, in that case, I uh, will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Sounds like such a cool word to say. Sorry. I have a great <laughs> week, all. See you in a couple weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.